Raise your hand if you've read National Geographic or looked at National Geographic, right? So we did a study a couple years ago where we looked at all of the National Geographic uh, articles on Africa over a 10-year period of time, from 1990 to uh, 2000. And we took uh, copies of all of the lead images, uh, the kind of the front page, so to speak, of the article uh, on Africa. And there were a little more than a dozen of them. At different, so I'm going to show you those uh, images right now. And I want you, you can use a piece of paper and write, I want you to look for the patterns of representation. What did you see in these 14 to 16 images and words about Africa? And is it starting to add up to any kind of a pattern of representation by National Geographic of Africa? I'll show each slide for just a few seconds, and then I'll put one slide on that has all of the slides. And we're just going to go around and just mention, it could be one word in terms of patterns. So not a big description right now, but what do you saw? We'll start with the time. Um, exotic. Exotic. Wildlife. Wildlife. Uh, flaws. Flaws. Desolate. Desolate. Um, poverty. Poverty. Uh, there was a lot of images of like small people and then like a large background, like wow. incredible landscapes, but really small, small people, people. Large background. Aaron? Aaron. Nudity. Nudity. Um, like, a strange, like, different. Different. Yeah. Which connects back maybe to exotic. Other key words that didn't get stated that you want to add? Anybody? Yeah. Well, when I said flaws, another one, the headline was restoration. So the fact that it needs restoration in the first place. Interesting. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, bright colors. Bright yeah. colors. Blues and oranges. Yeah. Say it again. Blues and oranges. And browns, I think yeah. I saw in there a lot. Anybody else? Caitlin? Uh, there was a lot of like violence and tragedy in like the titles. Violence and tragedy, particularly in the titles. Anybody want to add any others? Well, I remember there was people. They're always like either hunched over or like they, they don't look like regular people. Like not, not that they're just like a regular people, but yeah. they look like kind of extraordinarily different. I think when you go to Africa, a lot of, or what I've heard, is that a lot of people are actually dressed in like American clothing, and this looks a lot more like cultured, but we're not really imposing anything on them, but they are. Really interesting. Um, I would say that something that stuck out to me was more ancient. Yeah. Like with the African marriage rituals, those are traditional. And with the kingdom of Kush, the all ties to something historic. Do you think this representation perpetuates stereotypes about Africa? Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you think it does. No, are, isn't everything we saw true about Africa? Yeah. All those, those things weren't invented. So how is it that it's perpetuating stereotypes? It's only showing what we kind of want to see because it's showing things that are meant to sell. Say more what you mean by that. I mean, it's showing things that are exoticized. It's not showing like the daily life of someone in an African city. It's showing the more exotic, interesting things that are different from our daily lives. Really? Thanks, Well, I'd say it's probably predominantly people in more <coughs> Western uh, countries that buy National Geographic. Yeah. And so, um, and people, you know, we, we, I'd say we mean people living in Western culture, but we live in a society where people are, you know, influenced by that Western culture, and so it's normal, and it's something that we're just used to. And so people, when you're buying a magazine, it's something like National Geographic that's supposed to be, you know, about nations that aren't yours. You want to see something different that you don't see every day. And so they're not going to emphasize the parts about Africa that are just like where you are because that's not something people are interested in looking into. They're going to show you what's exotic and special and unique to that, uh, that continent.
What ties you to that is the sense of adventure, something that you can't see here on a day-to-day basis, something out of the ordinary. So I think they're emphasizing those things, because like Luciano was saying, there's things that in Africa that we see here, but you don't want to see that in a magazine. You could just see it in real life. So, Kyra. Also, you said if it bleeds, it leads. So Central Africa is a of violence. That would so is National Geographic intending to perpetuate stereotypes, do you think? Mm-hmm. Probably there's a lot of people involved in National Geographic that want to undermine stereotypes. Is it perpetuating stereotypes yeah. based on this study? Why is it perpetuating stereotypes? You kind of address that. What's the primary thing in National Geographic to make sure that it does? Sell. 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 And in order to sell, it needs to think about its target audience. It needs to address the interest of its target. In the process of doing that, is it making decisions and choices that perpetuate certain stereotypes about Africa? Yeah. Now, if we know that that's the case, and we recognize the kind of inherent bias there towards exotica, towards things that are different, towards uh, a, a more unusual, uh, brighter colors, or uh, greater violence, we at least have the ability to reflect on that and recognize that what we're getting is a constructed view of Africa through even a very reputable and incredible magazine. 